Hey everybody, Mike here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to signal for help. Now, this is not only a Bear Grylls type deal where you're stranded in the mountains. This can also be when you are in trouble while you are in a bar or a club, right? So it's both nature and urban. Right, let's get started. Number one, a hand palm gesture. If you are a victim of domestic violence or sex trafficking and you want to alert the people around you without notifying the person that is threatening you, there is a hand palm signal that you can use. You basically uh, hold your hand upright with your fingers straight up, you tuck in your thumb, and then you bring your four fingers down to cover that thumb, right? That's an internationally recognized uh, a gesture or, or a hand signal to alert the people around you that you are in immediate danger. All right. Number two, contrast. Well, this is something that might not work as great in an urban environment, but if you are stranded in the mountains, in the forest, uh, uh, and so forth and so on, right? Deserted island, that kind of thing. What you would want to do is create a contrast with the environment as a signal. So always carry something that has a very bright color, whether it's yellow or bright orange. You would find an open spot if there is one, right? And you would uh, pin that object down, make it as large as possible, and preferably uh, create the shape of a triangle, right? A triangle is, again, a kind of recognized shape as a distress symbol, right? So that's what you would do. All right, well, the next one is a whistle. Now, people that hike a lot, I would say almost always carry a whistle. But I advise you, uh, especially as a female, to carry a whistle with you at all times. Now, first of all, three uh, bursts on a whistle is a recognized distress signal, right? But let's say you are uh, out, of, out and about in nature. You are wounded or you're extremely tired or you're hungry, dehydrated and whatnot. It doesn't cost a lot of energy to blow a whistle, right? Uh, especially if you have to do this over a long period of time. Whistles are super cheap. They're only a couple of bucks and they might save your life, right? And uh, when it comes to whistles, three short bursts are recognized as a distress signal. Uh, signal. Uh, if you want, you can also go with the Morse code for SOS, which is dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. Or in other words, short, 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 long, 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 short, short, short. Right. Which brings me to the next one, which is SOS single. As I said, three short, three long, three short. Now, you can do that in many ways. You can, uh, for example, um, I don't know, uh, tap on a metal pipe. You can uh, hit a piece of glass. You can pound the wall. You can do all of that. You can literally write down SOS on the ground. Let's say you're stranded in the snow somewhere, right? Make uh, SOS uh, letters in the snow as big as you can, right? And again, number two, contrast, what you're going to do is you're going to fill up those letters with anything that has a huge contrast with the environment. So either uh, branches, rocks, anything that will create a nice contrast with that, right? So yeah, that's the SOS signal. And of course, you can do that with light, with sound, with uh, other visual means, right? Brings me to the next one, a flashlight. Well, can you use a flashlight for SOS signals? Of course, right? It's um, uh, three short, three long, three short. Uh, you can also do just three uh, bursts of light. Um, if you know people are actually looking for you and you're in the middle of nowhere, um, a flashlight itself would already be a good signal because people wouldn't expect them to be there. And that's how you could signal for help. All right, so the next one is a mirror. Now, uh, there are these uh, signaling mirrors specifically for emergencies, and a lot of people that hike a lot have a bit of a problem with this thing because uh, it has instructions, there's a little hole in the middle, it's kind of complicated, and people don't really know how to do it. Well, first of all, you can use a mirror to use uh, for SOS signals. Again, uh, three short, three long, three short. But there's an easier way to use that mirror. What you would do is first make sure that both the sun and the aircraft that's looking for you is in front of you. Otherwise, it wouldn't work, right? Because you need that sun reflection. 
Now, what you're going to do is when you see the aircraft, you're going to hold up your left hand and you're going to place the aircraft between the V of two fingers, right? And you're going to kind of place it at the bottom there. Then you're going to put the mirror in the other hand and you can uh, bounce the sun reflection onto your hand and raise it up to that V until it's in the bottom of the V. So it's exactly pointed at the aircraft. That's how you do it. Okay, next up, and again, not necessarily for an urban environment, but nevertheless a, a method of getting help. Smoke signals. Now, if you are stranded for a long time, what you would do is you would prepare uh, smoke uh, piles, right? Or, or fire uh, piles. You would basically prepare uh, fires. And what you do is you would not prepare one, you would prepare three of them, and you would put them in a triangle. Again, a triangle is a recognized uh, sign of distress. And also, if you have uh, them in line instead of in a triangle, from a certain angle, they might uh, be uh, seen as one fire, right? So that's another reason. So yeah, smoke signals. Now, of course, you want to have contrast. If it's a uh, bright sunny day and you're just uh, you know burning uh, dry twigs, you wouldn't see a lot of smoke. So you would try to burn something that gives thick black smoke, maybe something rubber, plastic, and so forth. Now, of course, that's horrible for the environment, so only do that in a life and death situation. Now, if you are well prepared, you might carry along uh, colored smoke flares or flares you can shoot into the air, right? And of course, if you got those, that's even better. All right, electronic devices. Now, uh, everybody has a phone nowadays, and with a phone you can do a lot of things, right? You can, for example, use the flashlight for signaling. If the phone still has signal, you can, of course, call somebody, right? But even if your phone is close to dead and uh, the signal is very, very spotty, one thing you can do is go in and change your voice message, right? Uh, leave a message saying that you're stranded, since, when, in what area, roughly, and that you need help, right? If anybody calls you even after your phone has gone dead, they know that you're in trouble and they know where to start looking. Now, if you are very well prepared, you would uh, probably have something like an inReach. Now, an inReach is an SOS device uh, specifically for people who go out in very remote areas even if there's no phone reception, this will always work based on satellites. Uh, it's a monthly fee that you pay, and uh, when you hit that button, emergency services will know exactly where you are based on your GPS location, and they can come and look for you. And they typically also have the ability to send texts, right? And then there's something like a probe light device, right? Um, it's kind of what you see on uh, the, 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 the vests that you see on boats, right? If you end up in the water, you have a little uh, strobe light thing going on, that kind of thing. Now, the next one is, uh, I would say, a pretty smart thing to do, and that is to agree on a private personal signal or word used with family and friends, right? I'll give you an example. Let's say uh, you are in a dangerous situation, uh, somebody is following you or somebody is actually with you and you have to be very careful what you say and whatnot. Um, for whatever reason, you uh, get a phone call while you're with that person and the person says, hey, be careful, don't say anything or whatnot. Your best friend, Kate, calls you and you answer by saying, hey, Catherine, how are you doing? Now, you agreed up front that whenever you call her Catherine, you are in trouble, right? Uh, you can do many things. You can, uh, I don't know, let's say you're in a restaurant and you're in a restaurant that you've been in a million times and they know you are allergic to peanut butter and you ask for a peanut butter sandwich. You get the idea, right? Okay, finally, number 10. And this is something that is great uh, that somebody came up with the idea. It's sad that it's uh, been done, but nevertheless, it's good that it's there, right? So what is it? Well, it's ordering a special type of drink at a bar, restaurant, or a club. I've been told by my girlfriend that in the uh, ladies' restroom, there are posters that explain if you are on a quote-unquote bad date, you want to get out of it, or you feel threatened or whatnot, 
you have the option to walk to the bar and order a special type of drink that's on that poster. Something like, uh, you know, I want to have uh, an angel shot, right? As soon as you order that, the bartender immediately knows what's going on and he will either walk you to your car or call the cops if need be, right? That kind of thing. And some clubs and restaurants and bars actually have multiple types of drinks, right? One is I'm the victim of sex trafficking. The other one is I'm on a bad date. And depending on the type of drink uh, you order, they will know what to do, okay? So these are just 10 ways to seek help. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this kind of video. Uh, please let me know in the comment. Uh, if you want to see more content, then uh, also let me know in the comment and I'll happily do so, right? Thanks for making it through the entire video. See you guys in the next one. Bye.